you know, the prefrontal cortex of your brain where you're like making good decisions with your life and money, when you're freaked out, that kind of goes offline. And a part of your brain called the amygdala takes over, which is all about survival and fear responses. And so at that point, when the amygdala gets triggered, triggered you're either going to be all about uh, fear of losing money or fear of missing out. Hmm. But either way, you're making decisions from fear. So your prefrontal cortex is offline and you're not making great decisions with your money. Welcome to Reward, the podcast of The Trust. We are the show specifically for women entrepreneurs who want to build businesses into the multi-million dollar revenues and beyond, but especially because we know the reward is much greater than that. I'm Ali Brown, and I'm excited to introduce you to these diverse female leaders from a variety of industries, women making huge impact and who are unwilling to settle for the status quo. On the web, visit jointhetrust.org to learn more about our modern community for forward-thinking seven- and eight-figure women entrepreneurs. That's jointhetrust.org. See you there. Now, get ready to enjoy this episode's powerful conversation. Penelope, how are you? Oh my God, I'm so amazing. I've been listening to your podcasts for years. And so to finally be on the podcast with you is Full like circle. hashtag life goals, you know, it's so And fun. by the way, if you're not watching the video of this, you have to go see how cute she looks. So go to YouTube or find a clip because, because Penelope, she, she, she's game on for the podcast. Thank wow. You. you love it. So, oh my gosh. So first off, where, where are you today? What's going on this week for you? I'm just curious. Give us a snapshot. So today I am in beautiful Benicia, California in our house. If I look up above my webcam, I can see panoramic views of the bay and the hills and falcons hovering in the sky. It's such a magical place. We have rose quartz planted all over the property and it's just totally my happy place. Like I look out the window all through the day and go like, oh my God, pinch me. Oh my God, pinch me. Like it's, it's just so, so wonderful to be here. And the only thing I would ever leave for is to go to a trust meeting. Or- <laughs> I remember that too. You were like, you were like, I'm pretty homebound because I live in, you know, my own personal paradise and my crystal grid. So yes, I decided to and I also, fly Yeah. And I have two young autistic yeah. kids. So traveling is a big deal and I, we are yeah. going to Japan this year. So that's exciting as well. But yeah, that's where I am. What's up now is my Seven-year-old is now in second grade, and he has not been suspended yet. So that's oh gosh, that's, um, that's a that's a win for sure. Yeah, and uh, we're just relaunching my YouTube channel after giving birth to my second baby and taking a break from that. So that's kind of like what's going on over here. Yeah, doing the refresh. So, um, well, it's great to finally have you on because I feel like I know you, but I also feel like I don't know you. With a lot of members come in, you know, we have a few conversations. I also sometimes put my ear to the ground with everybody who, you know, may know them and, and get to know them a bit more. And, um, but I really don't know a lot about your personal story. And so there's a few things I want to touch on today. Um, if you don't, I'm going to go back a bit backwards with this one. And I'm going to actually start right now, you know, as we're recording this and this won't air too far from recording, but you know, we're, we're going to the fall of an election year, which is always like whack it act. Everyone's flipping out about, you know, making big decisions right now about money. We're being told very different things from different places about the economy and what to plan for. And, um, you know, why don't you come at us with a, you know, kind of a, a, a level-headed discussion on, you know, how, how should we be thinking right now, first of all? Like, you know, what do you see out there that you're like, no, 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 this is where you need to focus when you're about creating wealth? Yeah. You know, my mission is all about financial freedom, especially for women entrepreneurs, because we are so underserved by the whole, you know, big box financial advisor industry, but really for everybody, because according to Bloomberg, 97% of people approaching retirement age in the United States do not have enough money or aren't on track to have enough money to be able to retire and actually like support the life they want. So this is a big freaking problem. And people are completely freaking out right now with the US presidential election and just various things that are going on in the economy and in the world. And it's important to realize that there's always going to be socioeconomic factors that are beyond your control. Uh, but there's always 
the sphere of influence of what you do have control over, right? And one of the things you have control over is what you are, what information you're allowing into your space. And this is important because, you know, the prefrontal cortex of your brain, where you're like making good decisions with your life and money, when you're freaked out, that kind of goes offline. And a part of your brain called the amygdala takes over, which is all about survival and fear responses. And so at that point, when the amygdala gets triggered, triggered you're either going to be all about uh, fear of losing money or fear of missing out. Hmm. But either way, you're making decisions from fear. So your prefrontal cortex is offline and you're not making great decisions with your money. And so if you have certain news sources, uh, stock apps on your phone, things like that, I encourage you to like, limit your exposure to that because it's getting you all like, you know, mm -hmm. and um, in terms of investing specifically, I think it's really important to, before you invest in any specific thing like stock or real estate or gold or cryptocurrency or whatever, the first thing you need to invest in is a strategy. What is your overall investment strategy? And all that means is having a clear plan based on real data for protecting and growing your money. And when you have data that you can look at and you can see, then you can cut through all the noise, no matter what's going on in the media and the headlines and the presidential election. You could be like, okay, what is my strategy saying is the best thing for my money right now? And it just like really helps ground you. Yeah. It, it, you suddenly, it's very objective way to approach it versus emotion because people get so emotional yeah. about a lot of these topics too, right? So I like that. And I like what you said in our pre-chat too. You were saying something about like voting for yourself, voting yeah. for, vote for yourself. Like don't vote, you know, like, like, yes, you know, you want to figure out who you're voting for and then, but in the presidential election, but first you're, when it comes to your money, you're voting for yourself. And then having that strategy is saying like, I'm taking care of myself. I'm investing in myself. It's also a part of like, I think that we're at the point in our lives where you, you kind of need to be your own best health advocate because, you know, Western medicine doctors probably aren't like really tracking, you know? Um, and I think say, the same is true. Like you have to be your own best wealth advocate. Yeah. So even if you have a financial advisor that you like and trust, uh, you are still ultimately the steward of your money. And there's a difference between delegating and abdicating responsibility. You know, mm -hmm. and so when people are like, oh, I have a person that handles that for me, or oh, my husband does all that for me, or I have a guy, I'm like, red flag, red flag, oh my God, you don't know what's going on with your money, you know? <laughs> so mm -hmm. that's why, like, a little financial education goes a long way and understanding what is that strategy that you're either implementing on your own or with a financial advisor, and now you can make good, educated decisions. So that voting for yourself, to me, that means that regardless of who you plan to vote for, if you're eligible to vote in the United States or who you hope people vote for, or who gets elected, if you're not living in the United States or aren't eligible to vote, like regardless of that, vote for yourself, put that stake in the ground. Like I am putting a stake in the ground for my financial well-being, my financial future, financial freedom, generational wealth. Like I'm claiming it. I'm claiming mm -hmm. it. And uh, that, that starts with you. Right. And it, Ultimately, yes, there's big factors at play that can um, influence what happens to you, but there is a lot that you do have control over. Yeah. So you don't look, act, or talk like your typical financial advisor, right? <laughs> Who comes in the Navy suit with the portfolio. Here's what you're going to do when you shape for the kids' college and blah, 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 right? Yeah. Um, you speak in a language that a lot of women appreciate and understand, and you have a different approach. So first of all, you know, how, how did you get into all this and, and get into doing what you're doing. And, and I think also have the confidence to be giving the advice that you give. So let's start yeah. from the, the beginning. Well, the, um, so the beginning, beginning, beginning was I had a very entrepreneurial mindset as a child. I was always doing little like contests and little businesses and selling cupcakes to my mom's clients and stuff like that. Um, but that entrepreneurial spirit kind of got pounded out of me in school and so by the time I was graduating college, I was like, okay, you got to build your resume and you got to get a job. And like, that was the only path that I knew was an option, you know, and I decided to go and teach in Japan after I graduated, because I thought it'd be really cool to live abroad. Mm -hmm. I had lived in Madrid and I wanted to live abroad again before I settled down, Allie. I thought, 
I thought once I'm 26, I'm going to get married and I'm going to have kids and I'm going to have a house and it's That's not going to be so easy to travel the world. And so I should, I should do these things now before I settle down. Little did I know I wasn't going to have kids till I was 40, but that's fine. Um, so I was in Japan thinking about what I wanted to do when I came back to the United States and Ali, I felt depressed. I was like, okay, fun's over time to go get a job. Mm -hmm. And then I was at the train station in Kisarazu and I saw this purple and gold book and it said, rich dad, poor dad. And I was like, oh, what's that? It was like one of the few English books in the bookstore. Mm. And of course, that was the best-selling book by Robert Kiyosaki, supposedly on what rich people teach their kids that poor and middle class don't. And I, it was like $50, you know, imported Japan prices. And oh, wow. for some reason, I just felt like, okay, I need to buy this book, you know? So I got it and it like unleashed that entrepreneurial spirit that had been locked away since I was a little kid. And I was like, okay, here we go. And I started going to the English bookstore in Tokyo every chance I got and got a, getting everything I could on like stock market, you know, business, network marketing, real estate, vending machines, like whatever, anything money related, money adjacent accounting, you know, and I would like bring back as many books as I could carry on the train and just like inhaled all this. So that was the spark. And then um, I decided to get into real estate. I started off by working in the business as a loan officer, and then eventually a mortgage broker, and then eventually going on to run the entire mortgage company. And then felt like I had the, the experience and whatever under my belt that I could start my own real estate investing journey. So I bought my first house and my second, and then- Where were you at this time? Where were you living? Just to first snapshot in California. I was in Benicia, California. I bought my, and now I'm back. I bought my first house in Benicia, California, because my mom had landed here when I went off to college. This is where she bought a house. So this is where I landed when I was back from college, and I fell in love with it. So I just came back a few years ago, and I love it. Got it. Um, But yeah, that's where I landed, and- I decided, okay, I'm going to start my real estate investing journey. And I took $10,000 of my own money. Over the next four years, I turned that into over $6 million of real estate. So I was on track to retire. I prefer the term financially free. So I was on track to be financially free by the time I was 31. And then you know what happened in 2008, right? But you don't know what happened to me. So the real estate market crashed. And when that happened, everything changed. It was like a domino effect, you know, and I went from millions of dollars in real estate, almost financially free to millions of dollars in debt, losing my beautiful home with the water view to foreclosure, being masochistic enough to go to the auction on my own property and ultimately being forced to declare bankruptcy. Mm, so I remember I being feel at that. The I feel it. Yeah. yeah. And, that, and that's when I really felt it too, because I was, there I was like, living in fear that I was going to come home and find my trap, my pets trapped inside and the locks changed and not, you know, scrambling to find a place to live. And I went to the auction and there was this like little huddle of white men and they're like, Oh, Hey Jim, look, there's a property in Benicia coming up. You like Benicia, right? And they're like, okay, yeah. Borrower's name, Penelope. And I'm like, <laughs> like cantaloupe. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm losing my house. You don't, you don't even know how to say Penelope. <laughs> I know, but I was like, say my name right. And it just like, at that point, like just the weight of all of it fell on me and that I, and that to them, I was just this number, you know, so talk about socioeconomic factors kicking your ass, right? Like now I have tools that like, if I knew then what I know now, I might've been able to keep my house. I don't know if I would have kept everything, but like Mm. that, you know, at the time that was a really big deal. And then I, um, while I was in the middle of losing everything and going bankrupt, I got invited to go to a high level mastermind on Necker Island. You know, Necker Island, right? I've been there That's twice. Sir, there you go. So Rich, yeah. Sir Richard, I wish I'd gone there with you. That would be so cool. <laughs> um, it was, uh, Sir Richard Rance's private island in the Caribbean, mm-hmm. right? It was $50,000 for this mastermind. And I had, you know, no credit, no income, losing my house. Um, but they announced when the trip was starting and it was starting on my birthday. And for some reason, just like Mm. this feeling came over me, this intuitive hit that somehow I was supposed to be there. Yeah. Like Like that was something in the right direction. Like that was going to take you to that next place, wherever that was. And I was like, oh my God. Okay. So I, I did it. I'm happy to share how, if we have time and you're curious, but I got to Necker Island and that was really 
the beginning of turning everything around. Every time because- I went there, I had, I'm sorry, Go ahead. I'm dying to share because I went there twice and I went way yeah. back like 2000, I think I was there in 2008 and then again in 2011. And, um, and every time I was there, I would have a complete crisis of meaning. Like I would have, because the vibration there's so high and you're surrounded by these people. And like one, the first time I went was with a a cool bunch of entrepreneurs. Then the second time I actually was privy to a whole different level of like business people. And I was like, I don't even know how I got here. And I I got invited and like, this is, and just had this complete, like meltdown in the Puerto Rico airport. I was like crying in a sports bar, like, am I doing enough? You know, you're like with all these people doing such a huge impact. So every time I've been there, it just took me back for a minute. It's totally like changed my trajectory. So there's some places like that that are so magical when you're around those kind of people. So I can't wait to hear. There is something about like, oh my God, I just invested $50,000 to be here. I'm here with all these people. Like I got to make it count. Right. And Mm. that, that feeling that like, "Mm, I got to I got to do something or prove I'm worthy or whatever. Like, I think that that energy is kind of a problem. So I made a conscious choice to chill the F out and trust and Mm. be in this billionaire private island energy. And so actually they were having this like casino night, um, you know, in the main house. And yeah, you and I, you were there before the fire. I was there between your visits. So that you still had the crow's nest up top right? And so I felt called to just go to the crow's nest and be by myself. And I don't think I would have done that if I hadn't just like kind of let go about like any attachment to how this has to look or what has to happen. And what really inspired me was that the facilitator of this group had announced that he wanted to win a Nobel Prize for single-handedly turning the economy around. And I was like, wow, Oh, this guy's got cojones, you know, I, I don't know, like, that's just a thing people say that was, that was my thought. And so I was like, okay, well, what could I do to single handedly turn the economy around? And that's what I was sitting with on the crow's nest and like up there, top of billionaires, private island, I, I got the divine download alley. Can I share what I came up with? Mm-hmm. Awesome. So I noticed that each one of us has our own personal economy and that may or may not have anything to do with the economy at large. So this kind of circles back to what we were talking about in the beginning, right? Mm-hmm. So my personal economy was tanking, but there were other people on Necker Island who were having their best year in business ever and just blowing out of the water and having an amazing time. And I thought, you know what? If I could support enough individual entrepreneurs, because we create all these opportunities and jobs and awesomeness to shift their own personal economy to one of abundance, then eventually we would hit a tipping point and that would shift the economy of the nation, the world, right? So I started making micro loans to women business owners in Asia, Africa, South America, because I wanted to have a positive global impact right off the bat. And I started working with women entrepreneurs to shift their own personal economy, which is something that I've always been passionate about. And so Mm -hmm. now as a result, fortunately, I'm able to run a wonderful seven figure business doing what I love and taking care of my kids and all of that. Um, but that's, that's where it all came from. And that's how it, I got started. And then also what fueled me to keep going and keeps me so passionate about all this. Mm-hmm. So what are the steps that you took to rebuild your, your wealth? You know, you had this big crash and then the big epiphany, like, wow, I'm actually here to help people with this. You know, what happened for you? What, what, what was your strategy and some ideas? And just so we understand like how you rebuilt your wealth. There's how I did it and how there's how I would do it. (laughs) How if I knew that. For anything, there's hindsight. Sure. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, how I actually did it was lots of meandering and figuring things out. And, you know, I, um, there, one of the things that I didn't realize was a thing was cash flow planning and cash flow management. Like I had my passion business around, you know, doing events and, um, I would make $60,000 in a weekend, $200,000 in a weekend. And then a few months later, I wouldn't have the $3,000 for the retreat center. And I'm like, what is happening? Um, so learning to actually manage the inflow and outflow of cash. Like if I had had those skills, I, I probably would have been able to keep my house. I definitely would have been able to keep the electricity on. The electricity got turned off. You know, all the, fr- all the food in the fridge went bad. It was, it was terrible. So if I had known that, you know, I could have worked through it better. Um, So I had to learn that. I was like, there's something I'm missing. 
you know, and so I didn't have the term cash flow management, but I just knew I needed to understand more. So I was like studying and asking other people how they handled things. And over time, I put together my systems that I use now that I call your entrepreneurial wealth blueprint. And I put together my whole approach to financial freedom. And then I was like, okay, let me put myself through this. Mm -hmm. Right. So once I put myself through my system, then I was able to become financially free in just a few years. Um, but it, there was a lot of stumbling in the darkness first. So the, yeah. the new approach is step one, get clear on your financial freedom vision. What is that life you want to create? Put numbers to it so you know how much passive income you need to support it. Easy yeah. enough, right? Step two yeah. is buying assets. That's like the goose that laid the golden eggs. You, you, know, you build a big enough golden goose that it can give you the golden eggs. And then step three is if the golden goose isn't giving you enough golden eggs, in the time frame you want, because I like to help women get there in five years or less, then what are other streams of passive income that you could create mm. out of thin air? So it's like your vision. Step one is your vision. Step two, buy assets. Step three, create assets. It, it's It's been um, interesting to observe over the last, you know, gosh, I've been working with women like 20 years and, and, and I'm, I'm one of them that we, we often get trapped. In, we're great earners. Mm -hmm. We're we're great at going into creating a business where we're like working and earning and we we find our passion and we're good at we're doing what we're doing what we do. Not so great early on in saying how am I creating an asset either with this business yeah. or uh, adjacent assets. Like what are some ideas that maybe you give entrepreneurs that they're like oh I never even thought of that for other assets that could be creating income. Yeah, I think it's really important to strike a balance between investing back in your business and investing outside of your business. Um, and I think we're very comfortable investing in our businesses because we have so much control yeah. over it. And I think a lot of us are control freaks. It's what so we us. know. It's what we're pretty reasonably certain of. You know, you know, we you will yeah. get this kind of response with this kind of marketing and right. Cause we, it's, it's a lot of us, it's all we know. And then that versus just for context where I was for so long, then that versus the, you know, Navy suit financial planner. And you're like, this guy or woman doesn't get me at all. Like I'll just keep putting more money back into my business. Right. And then yeah. we can get trapped there. So what are some, yeah, what are some of these ideas or things yeah, that you've had clients do? And, that, and that's easy because often the highest ROI you can get is in your own business, right? Um, but there comes a point where it breaks, right? An investment doesn't work out or you have a health thing or you want to exit and you can't find a buyer or, you know, at some point you'll want assets outside of your business. And so this is how you turn your business into a vehicle for generating not just income, but for creating wealth that lasts and supports you forever. And that is that taking some of the profits from your business and putting it into your own golden goose, right? So I'll give you a really easy, not scary at all way to get started that you've probably never heard any financial person say before. And you're gonna be like, okay, that's really, that's, that's really easy. Um, which is just to start with a savings account. So boring, right? But like set up a separate savings account, ideally a high yield savings account that gives you some interest as a parking space for where to put money on its way to get invested somewhere else so that it doesn't accidentally get spent on something else. So having a little savings account like that can do a, a lot of some, it can do a lot of heavy lifting for you. So one thing it can do is you can set up an auto transfer into that account. So you have a certain amount just going in there. And anytime, Allie, you can automate your smart money decisions. That's a good thing because right. then you take the pressure off your willpower and you put it onto an automated system so that now your wealth is building automatically. It's like putting yourself on prosperity cruise control, right? So um, we've seen that that transfer rate increases by 81% when you set up an auto transfer. Okay. So interesting. Okay. Transfer. I want to pause for a second because at first okay. we're all like, oh, we know this stuff and we can set up, but, but yeah. what you just said, you just said the big difference, right? That like, what was the, the stat you just shared that 81%. there's an 81% more chance of that happening. If you just set it yeah. up automatically to set it and forget it type of thing. Yeah. Okay. It's so good. The other thing that allows you to do is have a place to put money that you save. So like Ali, have you ever gone to check out at Nordstrom or whatever? And they're like, Oh, look, you saved $40. Has that ever happened to you? Mm -hmm. So where's that $40 now? Oh, I see what you mean. If they said that, then you want me to do something with it? Well, it's like, it didn't really get saved, right? It just got right. spent on something else. Okay. So the the shift I'm going to invite you to make if you're listening to this or watching this is 
to let go of the word save. In fact, I'm thinking mm. of doing a YouTube video like why I don't believe in saving money anymore because ooh, wouldn't that be edgy? But um, like to shift save to transfer and until, until that money is transferred mm. into the golden goose grow money world, it's not really saved because it's still at risk of just being spent on something else. So having that little account, anytime you save money or make extra money, you can transfer oh. it there. So when we buy that dress on sale, you're saying take what you saved from there. Yeah, take put that away. In there, put it okay. in that little account. And then on your money date or whenever the money date is the sacred time in my calendar when I work on my money stuff, like date mm -hmm. night with my money, right? Um, and so then I'll look at the the money that I've transferred and then I can move it on into a different investment. But having that parking spot for it is really powerful, right? Because it saves mm -hmm. it from getting spent on something else. And right now, while we're recording this interview, you can actually get some interest on your savings account. Like you can get four or 5% most places in the world, which has not been true since I was a kid. So that's kind of nice, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's not going to scare anybody, right? Um, then you can increase your financial education and see, do I want to go into real estate? Do I want to go into the stock market? Do I want to go into crypto? Do I want some combination of things? Um, personally, I started off as a real estate girl, right? And so the stock market to me just seemed like that's just gambling. Like what, what mm -hmm. do people even do with that? Um, so it wasn't until I learned how to invest in the stock market according to a strategy like we were talking about that I got confidence. I'm like, oh, okay, this is the information that I'm looking at. This isn't gambling. This is making decisions based on information that I can see myself. I'm not just like getting hooked by some story in a newsletter or by some show that's running on the media, right? Um, so I really liked that. So now I use that as kind of like my my baseline. So, you know, you can, you've heard the story of the tortoise and the hare, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I'm my own tortoise and I'm, I'm on, and my, my own hare. So I have like the slow and steady strategy. And then I have other things that might be faster. So I use the stock market as like my slow and steady, just making me money every month, just easy, easy, like, 99.9% .9 passive. Um, so that works really well for me. And part of the reason that I do that is because where I want to put my energy is my business and my family. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want investing to become like a second job. So I have zero interest in flipping houses or, you know, other things that I might have done when I was younger and didn't have little kids, right? So I think if you're, if you've built a business around your passion, then one of the things you want to do is have your investments be more on the passive side rather than having it be like a yeah. separate business that's going to distract you. And I've done, you know, day trading and swing trading and covered calls and all these things. And it just started feeling like more of a job. And I'm like, that's not really what I want to do with my time. I want to mm -hmm. put my time into the things that I'm most passionate about. So for example, uh, one really, really, really easy passive strategy is to just buy and hold the entire stock market. This is not a tip, it's not a recommendation, it's just an example of a strategy that some people do. So there's different ways to do that. One way to do that is to buy what's called an index tracking fund. Um, so basically investors pool all their money together and then the fund buys the stocks that are in that index. So like the S&P 500, that's the top 500-ish companies um, in the United States, but about 25% of the income comes from international. So you still have some good diversification there. So you could buy a fund that tracks the S&P 500 and then whatever that index does, that's pretty much what your money is going to do, right? And mm -hmm. if you look at um, the historical performance of the S&P 500, you could be like, okay, it's, you know, it goes up and down, but as long as I stick with it, it grows over time. Kind of like there's a difference between volatility and risk, like a roller coaster is volatile, right? It goes up and down. But the risk of getting hurt isn't zero, but it's minimal as long mm -hmm. as you stay on the ride until the end. So with the buy and hold strategy, it's kind of like if you're taking a, a trip across the country, like a road trip across the United States, it's saying like, I'm just going to go the speed limit the whole way, not realizing there's some areas where you might be able to safely go faster. Mm -hmm. And when we come to a turn in the road, I'm not going to hit the brakes. I'm just going to total my car, but I'm going to recuperate and keep moving on and I'm I'm still going to get there ultimately. So if you do the buy and hold strategy, there's pros and cons to every strategy. The pro is totally passive, going to outperform pretty much every other asset class over time. And if you stay in for over 20 years, historically the risk of losing money is zero. 
Mm. You know, the yeah. longer you live, something to think about because they terrify activity. you every day, right? It's or, or, and I don't pay attention to that stuff much, but you know, at the gym they'll have like CNBC up there or something, or you know, what's is that the one? There's just a lot of like yeah, information. It's, it's, it's up sleepy. and down and up and down. I'm like, I like your strategy. Just keep keep your arms and legs inside the vehicle. That's buckle that's, up. <laughs> Yeah, and that's don't the look at it. Yeah, it don't, just... don't 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 jump off the ride in the middle. We were on. Yeah. Um, have you ever been to the Santa, the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk? No, I haven't. Okay, well they have this one uh, this one like log ride that just goes la la la, and then it mm-hmm. goes to a big dip and it goes down a big hill. Mm-hmm. So my sister and I were right up at the top of the hill, and my sister was like, "Let me <laughs> try to get her to let her off before going down the hill." So obviously that wouldn't have been safe. You don't want to do that. The downside to the buy and hold strategy, the buy and hold the whole market strategy is you're going to have to sit tight through those 50, 60% downturns that could last five or six years. And mm-hmm. if you're older, that might give you financial PTSD. So that that's hard. But the uh, statistically, you'll grow your money three times the average investor, according to Dalbar Research, just buying wow. and holding the whole market outperforms wow. people who are actively trading by about 3x. Yeah. Also, 98% of active money managers and financial advisors can't beat the market net of fees. So it's not my favorite strategy, but it's a really, really easy one to understand and an easy place to start. Yeah. How do you um, work with people? Like, do they, do you do group programs? I don't know much about your business model. Do Mm. do you you do events? I know. Do you do personal training, personal coaching? You know, tell me a bit about your model. I have the most amazing business model ever. So we have, um, we do a three-day online event so people can attend from anywhere in the world. It's called Financial Freedom 101. And the idea is like, we in just three days, you build all the money, skills, tools, and systems you need to become financially free forever, to become financially secure for the rest of your life. So we'll teach you how to have money dates, how to manage cash flow, how to you know run an investment strategy with or without an advisor so you have all your money systems put together when you leave that event. And we have this beautiful custom box of stuff that I'm holding up if you're watching the YouTube video. Um, If you're listening on podcasts, I'm holding up a box right now. And inside is a bunch of uh, workbooks and fun stuff to support you before, during, and after the event. So if you think about all the time you spent in your life on your formal education, your professional education, like give yourself the gift of three days to dial in your financial education. Mm. So we do that event usually three times a year. That's part philanthropy, getting financial education out into the world. And it's part uh, marketing because then some people decide they want to keep working with us. So then on the other side, we have a 12-month mentorship program called the Financial Freedom Accelerator. And that's if people want our help, you know, implementing their plan and really uh, customizing the systems and customizing the plans to become financially free in five years or less and mm-hmm. want our support doing that. So it's just, it feels so good. And occasionally I'll do a VIP day or, you know, like the trip to Japan, things like that, but that's the core of our business. And yeah. it allows us to be insanely generous and still pay our team well and provide scholarships to people. And, and it's just, oh, I like it. I love simple business models. That's just, just very streamlined. And, and I like how you say, you know, the, the idea is to become financially free in five years or less with $10,000 plus per month in passive income. It just gives people context, right? Like, oh, like that's yeah. the, that's, that's a sample goal that I could set for myself in like what I want to create with this and, and just yeah, a different way for us to on. think. Yeah. And I like that a lot. For five years or less is, um, I think like once you turn 50, there's kind of like the, the whole financial freedom thing feels more urgent in a way that it doesn't feel in your twenties. So with most of the women we work with being 50 and better, you know, I don't want to wait 40 years and freaking dollar cost average into the market. I want to, I want this handled. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's why we've tailored the approach that way. No, that's very smart. It just, it, it's, it caught my eye and I'm like, that's, that sounds so appealing. I just like that message to women, especially. Yeah, so awesome. where can people go learn more about what you do and where can they follow you? Yeah, I will give you the secret hack. So if you go to my website, realprosperityinc.com, you can get a ticket to that event for $14.97. I'm going to give you the loophole for how to get one of the scholarships, which is you go to financialfreedomgift.com, financialfreedomgift.com, and you download my Financial Freedom Formula ebook. That's a free ebook. It's a quick read, but it is bite-sized, but powerful, life-changing. It's going to help you figure out 
uh, your own financial freedom vision and start putting numbers to it. And then on the next page, you can claim your ticket to Financial Freedom 101 on full scholarship. We just asked for a $97 seat deposit since we are sending a box in the email. We don't want you to be mm-hmm. like, yeah, sure, I'll come. Uh, but we'll give that back to you after the event. So it really is a full scholarship. That's the secret hack. Um, I also recommend that you go to YouTube and type in Penelope Jane Smith because I have a ton of awesome videos on there that can help you increase your financial education. And if you need to remember how to spell it, think of Penelope. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to call you that. I was going to say, think of, think of Penelope, Penelope Cruz. Yeah. She really like helped people know how to say my name. So I gotta... Should I be calling you Penelope Jane? Like, is it okay? Are you, do you go by Penelope or are you Penelope Jane? You know what happens is that uh, I got married and changed my last name. And Penelope Smith is a well-known animal communicator. Okay. And so- And you I, don't do it and, all. And, uh, <laughs> and I also- um, so I wanted to differentiate myself and also mm-hmm. like just the numerology of it. I'm not sure like how much I'm into that, but I'm at least a little, a little bit into it. So uh, Penelope Jane Smith has better numerology. It differentiates me. I can get the URLs. A better vibe. Yes, can, oh, I like it. It, it, goes to, it sounds uh, established. Penelope, Penelope like, Jane do Smith. Thing, let's do the whole thing. It sounds like a famous author or something like that. So, all right. Everyone should go check out your stuff. Last question. I have two last questions. So Penelope Jane. Um, (laughs) the first is, you know, obviously you've, you've done so much already. Like you, I know you've gone to a lot of events. You're obviously networked, you know, you've been to Necker Island and all this stuff and and you have a great network of colleagues and, uh, people. Why did you decide to join us in the trust last year? Yeah. Um, that's a good question. And it was a very intentional decision. And I have invested over like $600,000 at this point in education and mentors and masterminds and groups and stuff. And so having done a lot of that, um, I know that I really love being part of a group like that because it helps me, it helps open my mind to other possibilities, just like the masterminding and the networking and the connections, like that is super valuable um, always. So I'm like, I want to stay in that. I'm a lifelong learner. I always want to be like learning and growing and collaborating. I have some people in my life who are like, you're going to another seminar? Don't you already know everything? You know, because I am honestly like I am the best in the world at what I do. Like there are very, very few people in this world that have the breadth and depth of experience in the financial world that I do. Um, however, I always believe in learning and growing more and collaborating and masterminding and networking. And so I'm always going to want to go to stuff right now. What kind of stuff do I want to go to? I have found that as I've become more, um, connected, like you say, and experienced in a lot of groups, I'm, I'm almost like the (laughs) co-facilitator. Like I just, I'm holding court, you know, I did like, I did the Dave Ramsey master coach training and like all these newbie wannabe financial coaches are coming and asking me questions because I've been doing this for two decades and sharing, you know, everything with them. And, and that, that was fun. But um, especially when I'm plunking down like 25, 50 grand to be part of a program, like I want to be able to get some value out of it rather than just teaching it. Right. So there's that. I, I really want to be part of a group where I had a lot to give and there was also an opportunity to, to, to receive. You know, so that Mm -hmm. was one thing. So let me kind of go through my criteria. So I was actively looking for a community. I wanted it to be focused on the connections and the relationships because I'm a long-term relationships person. And I've been to so many events where they're like, it's a networking event and you get there and it's a multi-speaker event. And they're like, sit at this table and watch the speaker. And I'm like, what happened to the networking? You know, Mm -hmm. and I went to one where I paid six grand for me, six grand for a team member. And they're like, oh, you'll be, you know, one table over from Tony Robbins. I'm like, that doesn't do anything for me. I want, I want to be in the hallway with Tony Robbins. And I was even in the hallway speaking with Lisa Nichols, actually. And we were like yeah. getting into it. And they're mm-hmm. like, come back to the room, come back to the room. The teacher's starting, the, the, the speech is starting. And I'm like, are you kidding me? You know? So I was, I wanted like a true uh, network kind of thing collaborative thing. And I remember when we talked about joining, you're like, you realize this isn't a mentorship. I'm like, yes, I know. And isn't that fantastic? Like that is exactly what I'm looking at, looking yeah. for. Um, so I wasn't looking for like a coach or somebody to tell me what to do. And I wanted a woman facilitator because 
Well, I wanted a facilitator because there's a lot of power in somebody else holding the container for you. You know, I've, I hold a lot of containers. I've co-held a lot of containers and it's great, but it's different leading the group or having a peer led group versus having somebody else hold that space for you to be able to relax and fully participate. Yeah. So I wanted Thank to be you. in a group. Yeah. I wanted somebody else to hold it. And I wanted a woman because I am sick of men telling me that I just have to work harder. <laughs> I mean, oh my God, like my YouTube mentor. And I, I want my YouTube channel to grow. I think it's absolutely beautiful. It's part of my artistic expression. But like I joined this mentorship program and he's just like, you got to post more often. You got to post more often. And I'm like, mother lover, like I got kids. I got stuff. I got a YouTuber. Yeah. Um, You're so, not locked and, up in your parents' basement, you know, filming videos you know, all day. Course, yeah. Like, this is a 30 year old man <laughs> who. That's his full-time thing yeah, now. He's ordering well, DoorDash and making content. Like that's what he does all day. Yeah. And I'm like, that's not, that's not my life. And that advice doesn't help, especially the kind of content I like to create. I like to do my full fancy hair and makeup and I like to have it well-planned so that people are getting a lot of value for that 10 minutes of their attention. And um, so it takes me and my team about 12 hours to put together every 10 minute video that's mm -hmm. on there. And yeah. Like I said, it's part of my artistic expression and creativity. So like that's what I want to create in the world. And once a week is a huge goal, <laughs> you know, like quality um, over quantity for sure. Just do more, not helpful. Then I, ha then I hired another YouTube mentor who's like, okay, so what you have to do is you have to create a video that just overwhelms people with value. Like your, your, their mind is blown. They've never heard anything like this before. You just like deliver a ton of value and then they're going to want to follow you and stick with you. I'm like, okay, okay. And he's like, and just do that every week. I'm like, <laughs> like, that's not helpful. That's not helpful for me. So I'm like, I need somebody that understands that I don't want adrenaline and cortisol in my body all the time. I need mm -hmm. somebody that understands that I have young children and, uh, and a main business. Right. And so that was all really important to me was I didn't want men telling me to go be a man. And, um, and then I also wanted people that were at like a, a certain level because I'm happy to network with people of all walks of life. There's no, you know, specific criteria around like who I'll help or help or mastermind or partner with, but there's just, it's a different conversation. There's different problems. There's different perspectives mm -hmm. once you get to a certain level. And so I know this is kind of long, but like the trust checked all the boxes. I was like, female facilitator check somebody that I have mad respect for that I trust that I followed for years. Cause I mean, I, I've known you for about 20 years now, Ali. Like we haven't been like all up in each other's stuff as long as that, but I've, you know, I've been part of your world for a long time. Um, it was, you know, a women, I, I ideally wanted it to be a women's group and it is and women at a certain level. And so it just like every single box I was like, yes, yes, yes. So when you rolled it out, I was like, oh, made for me, you know? And so as soon as I qualified, I was like, I'm in. Let's do this. I love right? it. I love it. Thank well, I, you. I absolutely love it. And I really appreciate you having that container because um, I'm, I'm in other groups even now that I love, but it's, it's not the same. And this was just like exactly what I was dreaming of and hoping for. And thank you. I love it. And for you, what is the reward in all of this and all you've created and all you do and continue to do? What is that reward? Yeah. Well, I did a series of personal development trainings, part of the, you know, 600,000 I've invested in myself. Um, I did that back in my late twenties and I actually flew back and forth between San Francisco, California and Salt Lake city, Utah for about a year, like every two weeks for a year, I was doing that. I got really, really clear that what I felt like I was put on this earth to do was educate and mentor people around their finances. I wanted to write books, create courses, speak on stages, lead events, I had this whole vision for my life. I wanted a family. I wanted a beautiful home with inspiring views. I wanted an African gray parrot alley from the time I was 10 years old. I saw one in Hawaii and I was like, I need one of those. You know, and now 20 years later, I am completely living that vision. And I'm every bit as excited and passionate about it now as I was back then. And actually, I would say I'm even more fired up and passionate about it because of everything I've learned and seen and experienced over the years about like how 
big a problem this is and how much women really need women specifically and like everybody needs help around finances. So getting to live my own financial freedom vision and support others to live theirs is extremely mm. rewarding on like every level. And I'm so, so, so grateful that I get to do this. I love it. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, give your URL one more time where people can go um, for the scholarship. It's financialfreedomgift.com. You download the ebook and then you claim the scholarship on the yeah, next page. That's cool. All right. Thanks for joining us and uh, enjoy your estate <laughs> and, <laughs> for and your lifestyle. And uh, it'll be great to connect at the next meeting. Absolutely. Okay. Bye. I hope you enjoyed that conversation as much as I did. Subscribe now to the Reward Podcast to be sure to not miss an episode. And don't forget to visit jointhetrust.org to learn more about our modern community for forward-thinking seven- and eight-figure women entrepreneurs. You can learn more, apply to join us, or refer another woman you know who is over the million-dollar mark and is ready for a different type of women's network. We have events coming up both live and online that are truly creating new possibilities for female leaders. That's jointhetrust.org. See you there.